from the boss lady. The Kelly Holland Show. Watch out, let's go. Her info's always tight, talking just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling, and she's walking with the victory. The king is on her side, and she never quits. Put you on the show, and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly, are you kidding this? I'm like this. <laughs> Thank you so much and welcome to the Kelly Holland Show. I have been blessed to be given a newer platform and I would like to share with you today's guest. We have Miss Maritha Bellis. She is the children's author of many bilingual and bicultural books and she's also podcast host of Mamas 411. Today she's here to speak about her newly titled book, I Have a Secret, um, written in both English and Spanish. And I am so glad that she's here to help me along with that. <laughs> uh, Mary Thalabalas, please let our listeners know, even though I ran through it very quickly, who you are and what do you do, lady? Hi, <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Mari Tere Belas. My friends call me Mari. And I am a book author, um, social media influencer in the parenting um, uh, area. And um, I have a podcast. I also do Instagram Lives every Monday. And I'm on a mission to help uh, parents and be support to parents that are raising bilingual, multilingual, and multicultural children. That's beautiful. Um, I find in my culture, we don't really know much of our own history. Um, so we just latch on to whatever government holiday is going on. Um, <laughs> there you go. It's Memorial Day. All right. No work. Let's barbecue. Like, well, what does that mean? I don't know. So, 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 so um, or, or more or less St. Patrick's Day. I had no idea. Uh, that it wasn't even about the Irish, that the actual leprechauns were the, the people that looked like leprechauns, they were just short in stature in Africa. Um, and that was the tribe and uh, everybody around there was about four feet and under. And so <laughs> that's where the term came from. But I just thought it was an Irish you know, holiday. And so that just speaks of the confusion <laughs> um, that is um, overflowing in, I would say, the Black community. Um, and whatever history we really have, it's been tainted um, while living in the U.S. Um, so there's a lot more research that needs to be done for us to understand. I'm grateful that we just got a new holiday passed by the current president, Juneteenth, that's today. Um, but I think there are um, a lot of digging that needs to be done on our side. So kudos to you for saying within my culture, I'm going to write these books. I'm going to write them so anyone can read them of whatever culture. And then you also go into the parenting factors. So tell us more about I have a secret. Uh, well, you know, um, my first two books were written for parents. Um, the one in 2014, uh, right around that era, there was a lot of uh, studies being done about the benefits and the advantages of raising bilingual, multilingual children. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody was talking about it. So um, this book was called, it's called Raising Bilingual Children. It is um, an ebook. Uh, that was published in Spanish and English by Simon & Schuster, which I'm very grateful. And, and then after that, I decided to write a book about culture and that became a, a physical book and also an ebook. And I entitled it Arroz con Pollo and Apple Pie, um, Raising Bicultural Children. And uh, the meaning of the title is, you know, everybody in the Latin world knows what Arroz con Pollo is. And everybody knows what apple pie is in the United States. And I wanted to show that there is, uh, we, they can coexist, they can live together and you know, we could appreciate both cultures and, and, and teach our children to do so. Um, and then right after that, I started writing bilingual children's book. And you know, all of this happened, uh, I raised 
two children with two languages, Spanish and English, and three cultures. My husband is Greek American and I'm from Puerto Rico, born and raised, and my children are American and we're actually all Americans. So um, it was important for us to, to preserve the cultures and to teach our children the cultures we grew up with. And the languages, uh, we picked Spanish and English, uh, but it was really hard. There were no resources around. I, there were no communities like today. There's a lot of um, online communities that offer support for the families uh, that are in this journey. And um, the more I went out and I started talking at you know, book fairs and book festivals and conference, language conferences and women's conference, the, the topic would come up, oh, you know, my son or my daughter they go start, start going to school and they don't want to speak Spanish anymore at home. So I decided to develop this story about a little boy. Um, it was important to me to uh, come up with a character that children that are Hispanics could identify themselves in the mm -hmm. story. My That's kids funny. didn't have that either. Right. Uh, it must be relatable. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in, I, I wanted him to be a, a Puerto Rican character. Um, I grew up in Puerto Rico with, you know, people, your color, my color, uh, maybe even blonde and blue eyes. So there's a whole mix. And so it was important that for me to reflect that in the book. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I wanted Junito uh, to uh, to feel pride for being fluent in Spanish and English, to understand the importance uh, of, of being able to communicate in the language of his heritage. Uh, so that's what the story is about. And, and of course, you know that, you know, if your mom or dad tell you something for a thousand times, you don't listen to until someone else comes and says something to I'm you. A random person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, men do that too. They they just need the manly confirmation. I'm like, didn't we just talk about this? Last? Oh my god. <laughs> so uh, I made the the kind of like heroine in the book is the teacher okay. that is monolingual that she admires Juni because Juni speaks can communicate in both English and Spanish, and she tells Juni, "I wish I was more like you." Uh, so you know that kind of clicked in um, in his little head. Mm -hmm. and, and then she just makes it where, you know, it's a classroom thing and they have uh, a day where they all start speaking in Spanish. Like, you know, she brings up words and stuff. And it's just a cute story. And of course, you know, I have a secret is because for a while he had a secret, but then he didn't have a secret anymore uh, because everybody knew. I think, you know, the other thing is kids, you know, that age, they don't want to be ridiculed, you know, they have a different accent, or they have a last name that can't be pronounced that well, or first name. And um, so they, they tend to kind of, you know, pretend that they don't speak that other language, uh, because they don't want to feel different. So, wow. so it's all those, you know, I touch up on all those little emotions, and, you know, friendship, and a little bit of bullying, uh, soft, but you know, just to show the kids, you know, all this can happen, but you still, you know, walk in with your, you know, head held high and um, and be proud that you can communicate in in two languages. Um, That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and then you hit it right on the spot. There's the bullying doesn't go anywhere. Um, and it's, I don't know if it's worse now or then, or or maybe there's more resources. Um, for the bullied. Um, but I definitely never thought that anyone that was bilingual would be teased because they know an extra language. I think that's amazing um, that they are able to develop um, a second and third language. Um, and none of it's simple. Not if you grew up knowing English and now you're trying to learn another language. We, we get it in school, um, but it's not effective. Um, I can tell you the time, I can count in numbers, and I can say hamburgueses. That's not going to get me far <laughs> in the Spanish community, okay? I don't only know the time because I had a teacher that drilled it in my head. He made a song. He's like, que hora es? We're like, es la una. <laughs> I guess I only know es la una because I can't tell you any other time. <laughs> and I can count to 20. That's not going to get me far um, <laughs> at all. Um, but I never knew that people that had super intelligence is what I call it, um, would be demeaned. Um, and so 
kudos to you um, for picking up on the emotional side, um, the mental health side, um, and, and also bringing encouragement to the character within your book um, throughout other characters within your book. I, and, and I think that really plays into the real life that we live. Um, there are resources available, whether it be a nice, friendly teacher, a family member, um, someone you want to call a friend that is truly being your friend. Um, I think there's a lot of encouragement there, but there's also other resources, like you said, across the internet um, that could also provide a safe place and a happy place uh, for people um, that share commonalities. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so much easier now. And, you know, when you went to school and when my kids went to school, uh, they didn't have um, the option of having another language right away, like as part of the curriculum. I mean, I live in California, as far as I know, or I'm concerned, Spanish should be part of the curriculum from the get-go in every single school. And yes. it's not only here, I mean, I used to feel this way about California only, but no, it should be all across the United States. Uh, we, we know too much now. We have the scientific proof that we are all, you were born with a multilingual brain and had you had the opportunity to take that Spanish class from the beginning, you would have you know, be, at least have some conversational Spanish in your, in your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I'm hopeful that today we know a lot more, that we're more informed, uh, that there are you know, uh, teachers that can go to college and, and have a bilingual degree so they can go and teach uh, uh, Spanish and English in a, in a school. And, and, you know, in my research and over the last five years, there is a lot of interest in uh, monolingual parents that are now raising bilingual children because they see the advantage, which comes to my uh, belief that bilingual books are very effective uh, I because you know, now a monolingual mom or dad can read this book with this with the child and understand what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, rather than you know the child reading a book in Spanish and they have no idea because they don't speak the language. So I think it's you know it it has made reading time more fun, more effective, and um, and I I truly believe that is a gift. Um, you know, it's a gift we give our children. Uh, when they can communicate in another language. Um, so uh, let's, let's use the resources that are available and, and do it. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to attend a, a business leadership uh, presentation where the um, winner would receive a $25,000 scholarship. Part of it would go to their education and the other part would go to developing their um, invention. And I met a young lady that was working on a app um, that would translate um, schoolwork, um, written work, as well as conversations um, from one language to the next. Um, and she mentioned her struggle coming up in school, how a lot of the uh, homework she had, she really didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, and so how this app would make things easier for, just like you said, all of the uh, multilingual uh, children that attended the school or throughout, she, um, and she won. Um, I definitely voted for her um, as a business leadership coach because it's necessary. There, there's some really nice inventions. Maybe they've convenienced one of our devices, but this right here, this is groundbreaking. Um, she could even sell that to Google because I don't care for their translation app. Oh, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Google, but. <laughs> yes, yes, no offense to Google. I don't think that's one of their strongest platforms, though. No, um, and, and that's what was happening, you know, some of the classic uh, storybooks were being translated or were, you know, and authors were having their books translated into Spanish. And it's, you know, when you, it's not a literal translation. You can't translate literally. You have to really be mindful of the way it is said in that language uh, because it's not literally the same exact words Correct. In, in Spanish, whether it's French, German, it's the same thing. You have to keep in mind the norms, the customs, the culture, and how it is. So it's not as easy 
um, as it sounds. You can't just, oh, let me just translate that in Spanish. No, I just did that. I worked on two books last year, uh, one of which is hasn't come out yet, but it's, it's a, an African-American um, author that asked me to translate her book. It's a super cute story, and I hope it's going to come out soon. And I had to really sit down and and look at it from you know the way I would say it in Spanish that right. would also keep the meaning of what she was saying in her you know in, in the English version. So anyway, it's it's a uh, it's it's a wonderful thing for children to be able to be exposed to all these characters and all these stories and and see themselves in it. You know, I I love when I open a book and I see a black kid, an Asian kid, a Spanish kid because you know my kids didn't have that. Correct. Correct. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot more diversity and inclusion um, in the children's literature um, and, and, and throughout television, you're starting to see a lot more diversity and inclusion. It's not just a traditional white family or just black family. You're seeing a mixture of family and friends. Um, and I think that is applaudable. I also realized that um, between ages birth to five, uh, children are a sponge. And that is the prime time to introduce any language to them because they will pick up on it, translate it and learn it. Um, and you probably can't even speak it yourself. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because, you know, in Europe, they've always known this. You know, I did my first two years of college in, in Europe. Europe. I bless my parents for allowing me that opportunity. And I was 18 years old and there were kids around me speaking five languages without, you know, they would turn this way, speak one another. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And yeah. in that, you know, by then I was bilingual and then I learned the third language. And, you know, yes, it's amazing and it's wonderful to start when, you know, as soon as, as, soon as you know that you're pregnant, start talking to that child in Spanish okay. or French or German <laughs> or whatever. But, <laughs> But that doesn't mean that you can start later on. There's a, a, you know, a number of different approaches that parents can um, can take today to to start with the with the second or third language. And um, there's resources out there. You know, send me an email. I'm happy to send you a list um, and also walk with you in that in that journey uh, because that's that's what my mission is is just to to create this this you know this world where we all understand the importance of uh, the gift that we're giving our children when they are able to communicate in another language. Yes, I definitely agree with you. Um, were you always feeling the author bug or what did you do? <laughs> you know, you, you've raised your children. You got some time on your hands now. I guess there's some availability there. Um, but but what, who were you before all of this? Uh, well, I was born, I told you, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I had a bachelor's degree in languages because I just loved, um, loved speaking in different languages. But I came to California to get a master's degree in communications. Um, and I did a minor in journalism and PR, uh, public relations. And um, I ended up started writing a column for La Opinion newspaper here in LA. Um, okay. Two parents like me that had no resources in trying to balance the cultures and the languages. I mean, I would go to the bookstore, bookstores and libraries, and there were no books available to help me like a Dr. Spock or, you know, one <laughs> I'm like, okay, so let's talk about culture. How do I balance this? So I just, you know, whatever I was doing in my house, I, I, I was talking to my husband one day and he's like, you know, if you have this education and you are trying to figure this out we think about the parents out there that are emigrating that are coming to this country that are trying to figure out how to balance the cultures and the language at home you should write about it mm -hmm. so that's how i did that's what i i started with the column that mm -hmm. ran for 12 years and from there i went into writing my books and kind of like in 10th grade i can look back and remember thinking I love to write because I, I had just finished a paper in English and I really love the storytelling idea. So I kind of always knew I was going to end up writing eventually, okay. but, uh, but become a book author has been uh, a dream. So I'm, I'm super excited and I have a second book coming in like I'm, I'm working on and um, I, I like the idea of writing for children and just, you know, giving them these beautiful stories that they can enjoy. 
Thank you so much for being a part of that. Um, there's not many resources still, um, but I'm grateful that there are none. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that you um, were able to publish um, and to allow us to gain this new information and in education. Um, are there, what about the business side of it very quickly? Um, you had this dream, you had the drive, you had the skill, um, but when it came to putting it into a book, how was that process? Um, interesting. Uh, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was asked to write the book, the ebook, uh, which ended up being an ebook, and I missed that part uh, in the contract. But you know, <laughs> that's another story. Mm -hmm. um, but I was super grateful. It opened a lot of doors. You know, going out and saying that Simon and Schuster, that you're one of Simon and Schuster's uh, authors, is is opens a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I ended up needing a print book because then I started going to book fairs and book festivals and parents still wanted to walk away with a book. With a book. Right. So that's where my Arroz con Pollo book came out, uh, Raising Bicultural Children. And, um, hold on. Um, and here it is. And so I... Um, oh, and apple pie, right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Arroz con Pollo and apple pie. So I self-published that book. So I, 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 I go, I've gone to uh, conferences where I talk about publishing traditionally with a, a, or self-publishing. Um, and then my third, my this book was also published by a, published, a small publisher in Georgia. So uh, it's been an interesting experience. I think uh, my dream uh, would be to have a literary agent that would say, hey, you, you write and um, I will take care of the business side of things. Uh, but it hasn't been easy which means that there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know, in the, in the Hispanic Latino world, uh, there's been over the last two or three years, a lot of little publishing companies starting their own uh, business because of that, because they, they have, they don't want to go through the traditional route and wait to get an agent. And, you know, it's, it's a long process. Uh, so they've, for, you know, they started their own uh, publishing houses and, um, you know, it's a lot of work, uh, but they're learn they're learning their craft and how it works. And they're nowadays you can do Kickstarter or, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of uh, go fund me. Right. And, and they, you know, a lot of authors are doing that. Uh, so, you know, I, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, yeah. They're a lot younger than me, girl. So mm -hmm. I feel like, um, you know, I, 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 I talked about it with my husband. It's like, do we really want to start a publishing house? And I, I just want my energy in my writing. Um, I didn't want to start to, you know, learn the whole process because if I'm going to do something, I want to do it right. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that my friends are doing it. Uh, they, I could become one of their uh, authors, which is, you know, perfect. So, um, but that's the that's the reality of it. Is some okay. still? I mean, some traditional uh, publishers have a, a department where they publish um, Spanish books, uh, but we're still we're still growing in that respect. I understand. When you're the first at things, you know, you kind of paved the way for others. And it's definitely difficult being both manager and talent. I can attest to that right now. <laughs> yes. Please let our listeners know how they can reach you, how they can get to your books, um, and how they can uh, find out more about you. Um, I have a website, and it's my full name, Maritere Rodriguez Bellas, B E L L A S dot com. And on Instagram is one word, Latina Boomer Mom. Okay. If you go in there, you find me everywhere. So, but I'm also on Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, all the, all the important ones, Facebook, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you can, you know, write me, email me, um, follow me, whatever, and um, find my books. And, and my books are everywhere, Amazon, you know, online, uh, a smaller bookstores. I, I always like to promote the the shop small idea. So there mm -hmm. are some distributors like Cinco Books and Booklandia that also carry my book. Um, it's going to be in Canada pretty soon. Uh, another right. um, Latina that is starting an online um, bookstore in Canada. So I'm super excited about that. 
All right. Well, we are excited to see more of what's coming out of your your tool and banks and anything else you put together. We want to see everything that comes out of there um, because it's all informational. It's all helpful. um, And it's a culture builder. So thank you so much for being here again. Um, Watchers and listeners, we are so glad to have had this experience with Miss Maritela Bellis. um, And hopefully she can come back and visit us again soon. Thank you so much. (laughs) You are welcome. And thank you again for tuning in. Please join us again next week. Same time, same place. This has been the Kelly Holland Show. And never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Have a great day, everybody.